Based off the success and huge community acceptance of Unreal Engine 5, Epic Games Unreal Engine 5.1 is coming and this will be good. The new set of features and improvement presented on the roadmap promises a wonderful engagement of tools for rich world building, scenes and breathtaking creations. Epic Games captured the attention of creators a few months back with the unveiling and releasing of MetaHuman for creating high fidelity realistic 3D models and Unreal Engine 5 with high quality and extensive world creation tools which allows artists to effortlessly create worlds with tools like Lumen, Nanite, Word Partition, Data Layer, USD, geometry tools for making in-app modeling and sculpting, Metasound for audio engineers, Chaos Destruction for physics, improvements to groom tools for hair, and a whole lot more. And with the new update and improvement version coming, they are poised to build on the existing glory of Unreal Engine 5.0 to extend the tools and features creators already have. Unreal Engine 5.1 is set to feature a good number of beta tools and improvements in major aspects of Unreal Engine. And this includes rendering, world building, developer iteration, audio, geometry tools, pipeline, character and animation, chaos for physics simulation, cinematic and virtual production, framework and finally editors and UI system. And if you go over to the Unreal Engine public roadmap for Unreal Engine 5.1, you notice that we have a huge set of things coming. Lumen, Nanite, Path Tracer, the GPU light mass, and also the Niagara are having improvements across the board. There's also a brand new set of materials that is currently in experimental and there is also another kind of material that will be coming in Unreal Engine pretty soon. There is automated pipeline state gathering for DirectX 12. On-demand shader compilation is also coming to Unreal Engine rendering side of things. In terms of world building, lots of things have been updated as the data layer asset has now been set to standalone which enables sharing and referencing across worlds, levels, instances and game feature plugin. There is improvements to the HLOD, the large world coordinate support for world partitioning is now in beta, actor editor context is also here and the got lots of things happening within the world building side of things. And for developers, the memory insight updates are also available right now. There is this beautiful set of tools that is coming, which is the virtual asset that will be in beta. So what this actually does is to drastically reduce the size of data your team needs to sync down by virtualizing your asset. So team members will be able to sync only core asset metadata and then pull down bulk data on demand if they need it. And this is currently supported for textures and audio assets with plans for other assets coming in the future. The last time we looked at on Real Engine 5, we talked about some nice things coming to character and animation. The retargeting for virtual production is here. The pose wrapping, which we did talk about, is also available as this new library of pose wrapping nodes enables you to quickly add logic to adapt gameplay animations in different scenarios. Motion matching is currently in experimental, and this is definitely going to be very useful for those working with motion capture data, as you literally have no need to go back and forth with Motion Builder to match your motions and re export them to Unreal Engine. There's a refined workflow for animation and character deformation improvements and this is going to be very useful for muscles, exaggerated cartoony characters and skin sliding. In terms of audio, lots of audio tools are coming. I'm particularly excited about the tools that deals with audio wave, sound scope, the multi-channel audio output support and also the node connection visual feedback. So at this point you can now tell what is going on in the background and this is definitely going to be very useful to troubleshoot certain sound issues. In terms of platform, there's a lot of support right here. There's also some nice tools that are coming that deals with the geometry tools. Finally, we can now do some sort of proper UVing in Unreal Engine. Of course, there are tools that can actually do these things better, but seeing that there is a little bit of effort being added to this to improve how UVs are done in Unreal Engine just simply makes this super nice. So the UV editor improvement is coming as this is also in beta and there's also the geometry scripting improvement. Going to pipeline, this is where some nice things are happening. Material X is finally coming over to Unreal Engine. So if you do have Material X as part of your pipeline, right now you can take advantage of this and do even more stuff. So we did see USD come over to Unreal Engine previously and we're getting some update. And while we speak about Material X, if you're looking for free materials for Material X, then you should consider going over to this link, which I'm going to put in the description, which is an AMD OpenGPU Material X library. This currently has 347 materials that you can pick from. Combine this with what you're getting right here and you have a strong powerhouse to get that ILM quality of materials when working in Unreal Engine. It's very interesting to see that Datasmith SDK is having a field day as we're getting Datasmith export plugin for 3D Studio Max, SolidWorks, Revit, and also SketchUp. The LiDAR improvement for those who like to do photogrammetry is also looking pretty nice. 
And if you're tired of using Marvelous Designer, you like to do all of your clothes simulation now in Unreal Engine, then there is a couple of cloth improvements that might just simply work for you. There's a nice new parameter called the air pressure. And what this actually does is to model a difference in air pressure on two sides of clothes. And this can create inflatable objects like puffy jackets and also pillows. So in case you're thinking about doing some cloth simulation in Unreal Engine, right now you have some tools that can get you some stuff up and running. Cinematic and virtual production, like I mentioned earlier, are having a field day as well. Take record enhancement is here. There's also enhancement for virtual scouting, virtual camera. If you always wanted to do a live link face capture, you can now capture your stuff, save them as CSV files, and you can import them. Of course, there used to be workarounds for this, but having this right now is just super nice. Lumen for in-camera VFX is also looking great. So tons of things are making their way to Unreal Engine. So just in case you want to check them, you can simply go over to the link in the description. Some of the other things that deals with the UI and editors includes the improvements to searching and filtering within the content browser, a new curve table editor, a reference viewer, improvements to the outline, improvements to localization pipeline, the light mixer, UMG, and a ton of other. For those who like to read up on some of the things that are being discussed within the developer community, then you can come right here and check it out. You might also want to consider just using this tool as a tool for testing some of these new features that we've just talked about and new improvements coming to Unreal Engine 5. And do not use this for production as it is not fully quality tested and it is still under heavy active development. So tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.